Austin, on upholsterer, and I've got a bit of a confession to make because I, uh, I got a bit carried away and didn't realise the camera wasn't recording. So I'll have to give you a quick rundown of how I got to here, but also, good news is, ugh, the first of all we've got fabric for the inside, um, zebra. <laughs> but also we've got clasps and hinges, so we should be able to get this finished today. Should. Anyway, let's get rolling. Except I'm not gonna, I'm gonna go this way. The stuff in the way, I'll hurt myself. Okay, so just to catch you up to where I got to, uh, we do a little drill in there, a little drill in there. That's for the holes for the handle to go into. And then get some fabric and we snip it to size. Snippy, 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 snippy. And then using some contact adhesive, we attach it, fold it over, and then, oh, wait. We get our staple gun, we fold it over, and we tack it in place just to stop it going anywhere. And then we do the same on this piece, tack, tack. And then flip it over, and then we make our holes for the, for the corners, drilling those through, and then we just screw them in. And then that's, how we get there. I'm not entirely sure what I was doing there. Um, it's a little bit out of focus, out of shot, out of, out of range. Um, right, so we get rid of that. We're gonna start off with the top um, because at this point I don't really know what I'm doing. Um, so I figure that the top's the bit that you don't see so much. Um, so I measured that up. The idea is I'm going to put a bit of foam in the middle here um, just to hug the guitar when it's in there. So I'm just trying to figure out where it goes and I think I've got that figured out. So unfold some foam. This is half inch foam. Uh, it's quite a firm one. Generally it's used for like seating um, but for this it's seating a guitar. Um, so I measured this out about six inches um, by whatever the length was, I can't remember. Um, to mix metric and imperial, it was about a meter. Approximately 39 inches for those that care. So just marking this out. Sometimes the sheet has a, like a hard membrane on the edge, so we're just snipping that off. Right now, bring this back over, lay it down, spray a bit of spray glue, contact adhesive on there, and then a little bit on the back of the, the foam as well. carefully because I don't want to get stuck to our fingers and just lay that down in there get it lined up and then get it all in place smooth it out and it's time to start cutting some fabric so got this laid out on the bench 
I'm not gonna be too perfect with this. Um, it's just rough measurements because it all gets trimmed off once it's stuck and tacked down. Snippy, snippy again. And come from this way. pattern and then fold it over, spray some glue in there, a lot of glue, and then carefully we fold this back over, pull it tight and then just start smoothing it out, pressing down quite firmly with our hand. Exactly the same on the other side. I like to work from the middle and work outwards. And then the staple gun, just pop a few staples in um, right in the corner. And then there. And then just do that all the way around. Now it's time to trim that off really carefully so we don't slice our fingers off or slip and cut through the fabric in the wrong place. Pull away the excess. Right now with this is called back tacking strip, it's just a reel of cardboard. Um, but we use it to get us a nice straight line as we so we staple it in and then fold the fabric over it. Just to get a nice crisp edge. change the camera angle and literally just staple it on over the top of the, the fabric from the inside and then we fold that over and it gives us a nice crisp line on the top that you, where you can't see any of the staples we'll just trim the excess fabric off here and then all I'm gonna do is just fold that under pull it down staple it in place. Trying to get those staples right in the corner so that they're not super visible. And just do that all the way along and then all the way along the other way. And then just repeat that there, there and there. Okay, so I've finished the top. Um, it's taken a little while, but it's looking good. Um, it's a couple of bits I'm not massively happy with. There's some staples showing down here, but I couldn't really hide them. Uh, there's a little bit of foam poking through there. Um, but once it's on, you're never going to see it anyway. I also didn't notice that it's got this like weird zigzaggy, swirly pattern in the pile. Um, but it's fine. It's a bloody guitar case, isn't it? Um, then over here, whoop, um, I've got this block of polystyrene that I've just taped over so that glue will stick to it because um, so I've experienced in the past spray glue and polystyrene it just melts it um, so next thing is to stick some foam in and over this in there and then do exactly the same thing that I've done on this on this okay so just to speed it up because we've already been through it measure it up Unwrap the foam, measure it out, mark it out, and come out with the scissors, a little snippy snippy here, snippy snippy there, lovely stuff, and we move that over there so we can get a better camera angle, figure out where it's going to go, spray glue, tuck it in, push it into place, spray glue there. Pull it over, flatten it out, and get the staple gun. Just tack it in place so it's not going to move. 
spray glue, fold it, tuck it, pull it, pack it in place, figure out it's too long, even though you measured it, trim it off with a Stanley knife, tack it down, done. Now we're just gonna take the top and make sure that it all still fits. Um, can't imagine why it wouldn't have fit, but I just wanted to make sure. I think I just wanted to look at it too. Get it all lined up, figure out that's where it goes. Lift it up, ha ha, love it. So just cut out the fabric now. Again, not being too precise because it's just gonna get trimmed off anyway. And then same again, glue it down. Working from the middle out staple it in place again making sure any staples are going into the corners and we're trying to hide them and we do the same on the other side and now what we do here to get around the middle neck support block is we trim down into the corners from a, an angle flap there, do the same here, and then we just trim off the excess around it for now, just so we can get to it easily. talking you through this like it's a tutorial. I've got no idea what I'm doing. I'm making this up completely as I go along, um, just using techniques that I've learned over the years of being an upholsterer. So I'm just gonna trim that excess off there as well. So what we're gonna do is, I'm using a tool called a regulator, but a flathead screwdriver would do just fine. We're just gonna push that excess down in between the polystyrene block and the side of the case. Just pushing that in. And then really this is all that's, the only bit that's different from doing the top of the case to the bottom of the case is just working around this neck support block. Finish tucking that in. So this is it so far. Um, all that's left to do here is to, like on the top, um, just back tack some fabric around the edge, and then we we're ready for. I was gonna say hardware um yeah the rest of the hardware because you know there's already some there let's keep going okay so got it back on the bench and we are just measuring a center point for so this is for the hinges um so do the center and then do the sides and then figure out where it's gonna sit. Poke a little hole just to, there's a little pilot hole for the screw to go into. And then, so these hinges have got a, a locking mechanism to stop them opening too far. So I don't need like a, a ribbon inside the case or anything. So we're just finishing screwing this in. And just make sure the top and the bottom line up are parallel to each other. I decided to put a bit of wood on top at this point um, to add to the weight of me pushing down. I don't think it really helped, but you know, I thought I'd try. Just screwing in the bottom hinge. And it's exactly the same for the rest of them. I'll we'll go over to the front. We're going to start measuring up where we want to put the clasps. I've opted for the these butterfly clasps um, because I'm not 
making this case to as a security thing. It's just to stop it getting damaged when I'm carrying it around. Um, the way I see it, the locks on guitar cases are generally pretty useless anyway. If somebody wants to get in, they're gonna get in. And if they're gonna steal your guitar, they're gonna take the case with it anyway. So I decided I wasn't gonna get locks. I just wanted something to hold it shut. So just figuring out the height for these. what I'm doing, we'll just screw this bottom in and then figure out where the top needs to be, pull in the two parts of the case together as tight as we can just for a nice tight close when it's all together. So just screw the top in and it's exactly the same for the other side and now the reveal. Um, there's no accessory pocket in it because I don't tend to carry accessories in my case um, so I didn't need that but yeah um, would I recommend building over buying probably not um, it was a challenge and probably cost me more money than just buying a case online um, but you know if, if you've got the materials the time the tools the know-how or just fancy giving it a go absolutely it was a fun project um if you liked what you saw as always like and subscribe let me know what you think in the comments if you'd have done anything different let me know um if you've got any questions feel free to ask and yeah thanks for watching and i'll catch you next time